Well, turn me up. All right, so you mentioned in the last segment that you was OTF Nunu cousin. And I know OTF Nunu is actually related to Lil Dirt. So are you and Lil Dirt cousins? Big fact, that's my cousin. That's my cousin. Yeah, he uh, actually, um, right before he actually got popping with Chief and them, um, we want to say we met up like six, seven months before that. Uh, I was in, I was in back in Illinois back at the time. I was in, up north, and uh, I was in college and shit. And he was asking me advice on the music shit as well. And I was just chopping it down for him, giving him a little advice and shit. I'm not gonna say that I made him or nothing, or I, I made him popular or famous, or I showed him the way or anything like that. But I did give him a little bit of advice about the music shit, and that's that was big facts. So, um, since Lil Dirk been known, have you, like, reached out to him or talked to him? Not really, man. I ain't the type of motherfucker that really called the back of somebody else. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, I'm always the person, like, if I make it, I make it on my own. I don't want to say nobody, like, hey, you made it because your cousin is famous or you made it because he brought you here or you made it because he he popping. You know what I mean? Or I don't want a person to look back and be like, hey, man, I made you who you are. No, man, I don't want to be the nigga to be like, I made myself. Yeah, I feel you, man. You got to stand on your own team. Big fans. So, um, do you plan on um actually working out, working, doing music with him? Because I know you say you don't want to, like, piggy, piggyback off what he got going on. But, like, when you get established and stuff, do you plan on actually work, working, working on music with him? Yeah, I fuck with Dirt Heavy. I still fuck with his music. I got everyone in his mid his albums. That's my that's my cuz. I mean, hey, I mean, hell yeah, I fuck with him. Even after Nunu died, Nunu, I mean, Nunu was close. We was like brothers more than cousins, honestly. So it was like once he passed, it it kind of separated us to it kind of separated a lot of the family because of some other shit, some personal shit. But I don't want to really get into that shit. But other than that, it. I mean, yeah, I fuck with them still. I mean, that's big facts. Like, he's still my cousin. Yeah. Damn his fam. Alright, so you you from Chicago. How long you been living in Indianapolis? About um I'm gonna say about ten years, nine years old, so um I've been out of Chicago a while, so yeah, you know I mean, and then when I was in, out of Chicago, it was a lot of people that I lost, a lot of family members. <clears throat> a lot of motherfuckers I, I miss. So, I mean, it's, at the end of the day, I know, man, I got to do what I got to do right now until I can make it to the point where all my family is really embodied in one space and one comfort zone. Shit, I'm trying to get that. Million dollar mansion. I mean, the motherfucker ain't gotta be twenty or thirty million or hundred million. Just be a million dollar mansion. I'm comfortable. I mean, I'm not doing bad right now, but I'm comfortable right now. But I want to get to the place where that nigga ain't got to worry about no bills next month. Yeah, I feel you, man. I'm in the same boat. <laughs> <laughs> they ain't got to worry about that rent coming up, man. I'm telling you, what that mortgage, or a mortgage for me, but I ain't that shit. That shit hits you sometimes, man. You be like, damn. And then other shit around that. It's just life, period. Life will fuck you up, like I said. It's just shit that smack you. And then if something happened to you, you never was gonna happen. Alright, so you've been living in Indianapolis for roughly 10 years, on and off. What you think about the Indianapolis music scene right now? Hmm. I don't really look into a lot of it. I've seen a few of them, a few rappers like, uh, Let's do name of white or some shit like that. Um, of course, you is a uh, it's another dude I was listening to. Um, Zach, I fuck with Zach music. Zach be doing his thing. I mean, I know he do a little bit of verses here and there, but you know we know for that shout out Zach. But um, not a lot of motherfuckers I really know out here like that. This music scene, I don't think they really. They don't really promote a lot of rappers out here in India. I think India be on some Loki hating shit. And that's, that's not me on some on some bullshit or just because I'm from Chicago. I, this is like my second home. So just like Chicago, this is like my home. So I have no hate for India. I mean, 
mean, it's boring as fuck. Yeah. But other than that, it's cool. But I think on the music scene, niggas just be hating. Like, I think the city don't like promoting rappers there. The artists, you got to promote your local artists because, come on, man, that's, that's what puts your city on the map. You know what I mean? Your artist is going to put you on the map. It's going to bring more people here. Do you know why, like, the city don't get behind, like, certain artists? I think it's, it's a Republic state. It's, it's too prejudiced. White people, white men behind everything. Don't, that not just facts. Yeah. White men, literally, is behind everything. So, I mean, you go to that studio, that radio station, guess who own that shit? The white man. That's why niggas gotta get their own businesses popping, started. If you got decent credit or good credit, go get your own shit started, your own podcast, your own radio station. Because these white folks don't give a fuck about no niggas, especially in that state. That's actually yeah. good. That's actually good advice to tell somebody to go go be an entrepreneur. Yeah. Like, cause like in school, they don't actually teach you to actually be an entrepreneur. They more teach you to be a worker. So yeah, that's good. White man. Yeah, that's good become advice a, to give somebody. Yeah, become a slave to. You. To, to them, that's all they want. Then that's all it is. You become a legal slave. <laughs> that's it. In this whole world. Yeah, white men don't want shit. Want you doing good, man. They hate niggas that's rich. When you rich, man, you buy what you want. You get what you want. You can show us what you want. You above the law. And they hate when niggas is above the law. Because we know they feel like they above the law. <laughs> All right, so man, let's talk about your jury, man. I see you all bling down, you Big iced ass. out. Um, I know, like, when certain artists get get jury, people take them more serious. Do you think? Do you think people take you more serious because the jury you have on? In a way, man, I think a lot of people. I think representation sometimes is a is a big thing, and it not not just with artists, but in the industry. Period. A lot of people like seeing that you glowed up. If you glowed up, man, you got that crap, you got that look, like, damn, we can make something for him, you know what I'm saying? But I spent, I spent bands on my jury. I can't even stunt. I mean, it's, all of it's not, they're not all like BVSs or nothing. They're not 70, 80 fucking thousand dollar chains or uh, 90 thousand dollar bracelets or necklaces or watches, like, but they... They not, I mean, you gonna turn my neck green or nothing. So, <laughs> you know what I mean, all this shit is real gold. It's just, you know what I mean, my diamonds is what probably 0.15 carats. So it's not like whole carats and my shit, my whole diamonds and shit. So it's not, it's not fake though. But you know what I mean, but shit, you gotta fake it till you make it, even if it is. <laughs> so, you know. You know, I ain't get shit. Yeah, but nah, they go. I'm just keeping one hundred. You know what I mean, ninety nine plus one for sure. Big facts. Well, turn me up.